Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, the lines are changing for the Andre Ward Sergei Kovalev fight. We're going to talk about specific plays um, in a few minutes here on this video. But let me tell you, right? You know, boxing really isn't that big. It's not. Now, John David Jackson, Kovalev's trainer, has been saying some pretty tough things, very tough things, about Andre Ward, right? He claims that Andre Ward, from what he sees on film, and keep in mind, John David Jackson was a fighter before he became a trainer. He fought Bernard Hopkins. Then he was a trainer. He trained his fighter, Kovalev, to beat Bernard Hopkins. Right? John David Jackson claims that Andre Ward is not as complicated an opponent as Bernard Hopkins. That Kovalev-Hopkins fight was a blowout. Right? The statements are a bit stunning because it's not the usual trash talk you would get before a fight. Now what I want people to understand is that, you know, there's really no bad blood between John David Jackson and Andre Ward because understand, John David Jackson trains heavyweight Brian Jennings who is managed by James Prince, right? Who manages Andre Ward, right? Full disclosure, I know James Prince, full disclosure, I know or at least met Andre Ward, right? Let's just put it this way. When John David Jackson is making statements, such as the statement that Bernard Hopkins was a more complicated opponent than Andre Ward. To me, the statement is really jarring because of the lack of animus between John David Jackson and Andre Ward's camp. Now, perhaps there's some competition going on between Virgil Hunter, Andre Ward's trainer, and John David Jackson. But just to understand, John David Jackson is friendly with Ward. He's friendly with Ward's promoter, right? He, he's, he's friendly with Ward's manager. Let me say this too. Another superstar trainer. I was really struck. This surprised me by the comments of Abel Sanchez. And I want you to Google all of this, right? This video should just be your first step in researching the fight. Right? What I say, you should actually verify, right? Go online, find out more information than what I'm saying here in this video. Because at the end of the day, it's your money, and it's dependent on your research. Now, Abel Sanchez, after Sullivan Barrera fought Andre Ward, gave an interview where he said, look, if Kovalev, who he does not train, hits Ward with the shots that my guy, Sullivan Barrera, hit him with tonight, Andre Ward is going to be in big trouble. Now here again, understand the connections in boxing. Did you know that Abel Sanchez used to train Tavares Cloud? While Tavares Cloud was managed by James Prince, who currently manages Andre Ward. Right? So, Sanchez knows James Prince. Right? These guys are friendly and stuff like that. But yet, Abel Sanchez was concerned by Ward's performance against his fighter, Sullivan Barrera. Now, let's dig deeper than the HBO commentary for the fight. I know guys like Jim Lampley are fawning over whatever fighter has a contract with HBO. Okay, fair enough, right? There's something called the house fighter. 
right? You can imagine Andre Ward has been a dominant fighter for a long time. He's the bigger name in boxing. He's the A side to Sullivan Barrera, right? HBO's broadcasters cater to the A side. Forget what was said on Fight Night by the announcers. Listen to the guys who are actually the trainers who have no animus, no beef, right, with Andre Ward's management. To me, this is almost akin to, you know, Thanksgiving dinner where Uncle Ronnie starts making some hard lines about some people in the family. And you understand that Uncle Ronnie is saying it out of love and respect and admiration. That makes it even worse. Right? So, this fight does concern me. I'm a big fan of Andre Ward's. Huge fan. Right? I think he's a great fighter who really is an excellent ambassador for the sport, too, outside of the ring. Right? The sport really is well served when Andre Ward is its spokesman. Right? You're not cringing, you're not covering up your kid's eyes or anything like that. Right? Andre Ward feels that he has a responsibility to portray the sport in a positive light. Right? But, you know, when superstar trainers, and it's very hard to find better trainers in the sport than John David Jackson and Abel Sanchez. Right? Sanchez, of course, is the trainer for Golovkin. <laughs> right? You know, very hard to find better trainers. And when you read their lines, wow. It sounds like they're seeing things on film that make them believe that Kovalev has the edge in this fight. Right? What I want people to do is to further research Abel Sanchez's comments on Alexander Brand, the opponent that Andre Ward faced after beating Sullivan Barrera. Let's just say that Brand really wasn't the kind of litmus test that would lead someone to believe that Ward is back. Right? That's really the question. Which version of Andre Ward shows up on fight night? If it's Prime Ward from the Showtime Super 6, he probably schools Kovalev. But if it's Ward coming off of injuries, coming off of rust, right, fighting in a different division against non-A-level competition, right, at least competition not wearing belts at the time of the fight. And if Ward is you know, showing that the punch hasn't carried to 175. That he's getting hit a little bit more. Right? That other guys are able to come up on him and hit him in the body. Right? The kind of shots that against a heavy-handed guy might drop a guy. Right? Then it is. Time to get concerned. So... I believe you need to be careful with this fight. Let me tell you what I think here, right? I've mentioned it already online. If the fight ends by KO, I believe that it's likely going to be Kovalev winning by KO, right? I think Kovalev is heavy handed, right? If what Sanchez said after the Sullivan Barrera fight is legitimate. That Barrera was able to get in and land some shots. You look at the film yourself, you judge for yourself. Barrera's not a big puncher. Then you have to be concerned by the fact that, let's face it, it was only guile and experience that allowed Bernard Hopkins to go the distance against Kovalev in an overwhelmingly lopsided fight. Right? Jean Pascal's a pretty savvy guy. Jean Pascal was unable to go the distance against Kovalev. 
right? Ike Chalemba goes the distance against Kovalev, but Chalemba really was more outside, playing a survival game. Then he was coming inside, trying to win the fight, right? I don't think Andre Ward wants to play a survival game. I think Ward is coming for Kovalev's title, right? If Andre is in the ring, He's going to be trying to win the fight, not trying to go the distance, which is the impression I got from Mike Chalemba. Keep in mind, too, even with Chalemba's conservative approach, right, where he's on his back foot and he's bending away, Chalemba gets dropped in that fight. Also, there's another dynamic, right? That fight was in Kovalev's backyard. There are certain fighters, Azuma Nelson used to be one of them, I don't know who is the guy now, who actually have a philosophy of fighting guys when they're at home. Right? The idea is that the guy's going to be so busy getting Uncle Ronnie and Cousin Bobby tickets to the fight. He's going to be so busy trying to impress his neighbors that he's going to be thrown off his game. Right, so literally, Azuma Nelson, look at his career, traveled around the globe, fighting guys where they lived, right? Because he felt, look, you know, I show up, nobody knows me, I get to train, the other guy is home, you know, he's dealing with, you know, the folks at home, the high school coach, you know, uh, people hitting them up for tickets, right? Nobody's hitting up the visitor for tickets. Right now, understand there's the other side of the argument, the Floyd Mayweather side, right? The Andre Ward side, right? Floyd fights a lot in or fought a lot in Las Vegas where he lives, right? Home cooking, right? He gets to sleep in his own bed, <laughs> right? The fight's just another day of the week. He's comfortable. He's in a pattern, right? Andre Ward fights a lot out of Oakland. Same type thing. There's nothing quite as good as being close to your family, right? Something happens, you can actually go talk with your kids, right? You're, you're nearby. You're not in Moscow or, you know, Australia or New Zealand or London, right? You're actually in the neighborhood, right? You, you know, your friends are nearby. You can get second opinions on how you look in the ring. Okay, I get it. Now this fight's in Vegas, right? It's new. For these guys. It's new for Andre Ward. It's unfamiliar. Right? For you the gambler, you're going to have to figure out how guys adjust to the bright lights right around Thanksgiving. Now let's talk about actual odds. Right? I believe if it goes the distance, Andre Ward wins the fight. Let's just put it simply that way. Andre Ward to win is a minus 137, right? What you might want to do, right? I believe Kovalev by KO, KO, Andre Ward simply to win. But let's get provocative here, right? Did you know the under 10 and a half rounds is going off at a plus 160, right? Plus 160. Understand, the under 10 and a half rounds takes you 10 full rounds into the halfway point of the 11th round. It's a plus 160. If either guy gets the knockout, didn't Andre Ward stop Paul, um, stop Paul Smith? Didn't Andre Ward beat up and stop Chad Dawson? If either guy gets the KO in the first 10 and a half rounds of the fight, you're getting a plus 160. This gives you an opportunity if Andre Ward were to close the show of having a hedge but yet winning 
both sides of the bat. Should Ward do so by KO in the first ten and a half rounds of the fight? Right? So, understand, if you take Andre Ward simply to win, as I make this video on November the 16th, 2016, you're getting a minus 137. Right? Minus 137. If you then take the under 10 and a half rounds, folks, you're hedged for a Kovalev victory in the first 10 and a half rounds of the bet. And if Andre Ward somehow presents a dynamic that Kovalev is not ready for. Kovalev is a guy who was down in fights, right? Blake Caparello fight. He's down in that fight. I believe the Darnell Boone fight, the first one, he's down in that fight, right? If Ward shows up with a dynamic that Kovalev is simply not ready for, and if Ward gets the KO, then you're in the penthouse because then you're getting the plus 160 on the under 10 and a half rounds coupled with the minus 137 on Ward simply to win the fight, right? Let's see if we could take this one step further, right? Let's say you're really a hardcore gambler. Let's say you're okay having holes in fights. Parts of the fight where if the fight stops, you lose it all. If you're prepared to do that, then here's a hedge to consider. Andre Ward to win by decision. You're getting better than even money odds, folks. You're getting a plus 110. Right? Ward by decision, plus 110, coupled with the under 10 and a half rounds at plus 160. Again, better than even money. You're not even paying the minus 137. You're getting better than even money. So if Andre Ward wins the fight by decision, you win. Right? Because you're getting better than even money. Not a lot, but it's a win. If Andre Ward wins by KO, if anyone wins by KO in the first ten and a half rounds of the fight, you win. Understand though, if Andre Ward gets the KO after the midway point of the eleventh round, you lose it all. Understand if Sergei Kovalev beats up Andre Ward like he did Bernard Hopkins and wins the fight by decision or wins the fight in the last round and the half you lose it all right that's the risk involved in that play right to sum up I want you to consider using the plus 160. Understand, Kovalev simply to win is a plus 110. You're getting a plus 50. Right? By taking the under 10 and a half rounds. Right? And I want you to consider hedging the play with Andre Ward by decision. Right? My logic is simply. If it goes to a decision, I'm expecting Andre Ward to win the fight, right? If Andre Ward is ahead after 11 and a half, excuse me, 10 and a half rounds, I'm expecting Andre Ward to coast into a win. I'm not expecting Andre Ward to go Billy Kahn and to suddenly decide, you know what? I need to make a statement here. I need a stoppage, right? But... This fight is extremely dangerous. There is a scenario where Andre Ward realizes that 175 is not 168. That fighting Sullivan Barrera 
and Alexander Brand is not adequate preparation for fighting Sergei Kovalev, a guy who destroyed Jean Pascal to such an extent that there's a moment in that fight where Freddie Roach in Pascal's corner, another superstar trainer, says, look, if you don't show me something this round, I'm going to stop the fight. And then goes ahead and stops the fight. Right? There is a scenario. You saw it play out in Kovalev Bernard Hopkins, where Kovalev batters an opponent, doesn't get the stoppage, goes the distance, gets the decision. Right? Even though he didn't get the stoppage. You saw that in his last fight against Ike Chalempa. Right? Understand if that happens and you take this advice, you lose it all. Right? So, this is not for the faint of heart. I want everyone here to fully grasp and understand the risk involved. Because I believe Andre Ward wins the decision. Because I believe if there's a knockout, Kovalev likely gets the KO. And because the casino is crazy enough to give me a plus 160 if either guy gets the KO for the first 10 and a half rounds. Based on updated odds. The bet I like as of today, November the 16th, 2016, and understand, this position could well change as the odds being offered and the props being offered change, right? I'm just telling you the best bet I see on the board today, right? And that'll change over time because other days they're going to have other odds. It's a different equation. But the best hedge I see on the board today is... The under, 10 and a half, at a plus 160, hedged with Andre Ward by decision at plus 110, right? Understand, though, if you're a Ward fan, you're going to be naked, naked, for four and a half minutes. The last minute and a half of the 11th round and all three minutes of the 12th round. If you could sleep at night knowing that that's the case, that's the play I like. The under, 10 and a half at plus 160, hedged with Ward by decision. Let me hear from you, right? I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video, right? Understand too that while Andre Ward is hard to stop, right? He has been down against Darnell Boone, right? America's best litmus test, right? Darnell Boone gave both of these guys all kinds of trouble the first time he faced them, right? So just understand, a human chin will go if hit the right way, especially when you're in a new weight class. So you need to understand that past films might not fully reflect the full risk involved in this fight for Andre Ward. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your updated views in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.